Hello and welcome back to the channel. This is going to be a video on a tool that I've used a couple of times. Um, Tanstack Query. I've definitely used it back in the day when it was called React Query and I also used View Query a few times. But this video is going to be about using uh, View Query um, with a uh, obviously a Vue.js application. So as usual, all source code is posted online. Welcome to see the link below to uh, follow along. But this is going to be another of a, more of a code walkthrough than typing along. So first, let's take a look at what the app is and actually does. So, all right, let's take a quick look at the app and then we'll walk through the code. So the idea that we have here is we we're showing paging. And then, as I said, we're showing infinite scrolling paging. I can go back and forth. Infinite scroll is just adding more content. So um, I'm loading 20 items at a time. We, we can track the page by look at who's at the, looking at who's at the top of the page. You can see the top of this page here is Laura Woods. As I go to the next page, I get Johan Lemon, And I can go to another page and we keep loading different people. And then I can also go to previous pages. I get my Carl Johnson, I get my Johan, and then I go back and I get my Laura Woods. The one thing that you'll notice is that the pages are automatically getting cached for you by using View Query. And so it's gonna load the old, the original stale data, and then in the background, it's gonna fetch and get the new data, and then it'll just kind of merge the data if the data needs to be merged. Actually, merge isn't the right word. It will update the elements in the DOM that they need to be updated appropriately. Um, so see how when I switch to this next page, how quickly it gets updated, because it's pulling the data from the cache. Once again, pulling data from the cache, pulling data from the cache. There's a little bit of delay there because that data did not exist before, so it had to go get it. Um, but as I go back, it's updated because it's from the cache and you can see that it's working fine. So this is one of the cool things that once I show you the code, you'll see you get kind of for free out of the box by using a view query from Tanstack. The next one is this infinite scroll. And so what infinite scroll is, it could be implemented where as you get toward the bottom of the page, it just automatically goes out and loads more data. But what I've, how I've implemented it is that you have to click the button to load more data. Um, I have three pages of 10 elements and um, you'll see how easily all of this, the paging and the cursor and uploading the data and the caching of data is all being managed for you by view query. So now here, if I want to, I have my page one, so now let's load more data. And now it's just adding more data to the bottom automatically for you. And then if I click load more data again, it's now added more data to the bottom. And since I've said that there's only 30 items in the page, 30 items altogether to load, it knows that there's no more data to load. And you can see it's now hitting my load button. So that's the UI. Now let's go take a look at the source code that made all this happen. And we'll still, we'll go back and we'll start with paging. So let's kind of refresh this. And then I also have it over here running in um, in my debugger with the view query debug tools open. And I'll, I'll step through what's happening with the debug tool after we go through the code. So um, example, this is a Vue.js application. Um, I use Ionic Framework to kind of style it because it's just what I'm most comfortable with. I build mobile applications, Ionic works with mobile, but this code will work with any Vue application. So, um, just quickly going over the UI, what we have here on my uh, home page is we have this segment control, which allows me to switch between either my infinite example or my paging example, which are uh, components that are kind of managing the list and everything like that. So let's, since we're on paging, let's go to example paging and kind of walk through what's happening in here. So just from the template, first of all, if I'm loading and there's no data, we get the loading screen. Let's see, and that's how we're getting that. Um, but if you notice every time after that, we're not seeing it, it's because um, we already have data, so I'm not showing the initial loading, um, I'm not showing the initial loading indicator. Okay, otherwise we actually show what current page we're on. Um, we're doing a little bit of UI work here. Um, is fetching is given to us by view query, so it lets us know if it's fetching, and if it's fetching data, I disable both the buttons. You can see I'm doing it here and up there. Um, so that the buttons switch to loading whenever loading's happening. So you can see they're switched to loading here. Um, 
so that's what's happening here. And then the next part here is I'm just looping through the data that I get back from my query. I'm using a value, the um, UID to, for my key, and then I'm just rendering the email address. So there's nothing really special happening up here in the UI other than leveraging the variables that we're getting, the is fetching variable that we're getting and the data variable that we're getting back from uh, view query. So let's look at how we set up view query. So we set up view query. Well, first, let me go back and mention that initially to set up view query, you add the view query plugin in uh, your main TS or main GS when you start your application. All right, um, so now back to my paging. So here's my paging example. Um, we'll start from the top. This is my people fe fetcher function. I'm using random user me. I have the page that I want to get um, as a, as a uh, reactive variable being passed in. I want 20 results. And then by using this seed, it makes sure it gets it ensures that I'm getting the right data as I'm paging forward and backwards. All right, um, this is just a basic fetch. I do a response, I get my data. I'm doing this fake delay in here so that you can kind of see the loading indicators. You don't need to do that. I'm just doing it so that you can see visibly that it's loading data. And then I take the results from the object that I get back and I pass that back, okay? Um, that's all I have to do and to get the data into view query so that it can be utilized appropriately. And then what you do down here inside of, let's kind of remove these because we're not using them. You see what you do down here inside of view query is I initialize my page reference as one and then I call use query. I'm passing it my query key, which is people and the page number combined, they make the key. Um, so it's that's how it's pulling the data out of the cache and it needs to pull the data out of the cache and then i just pass my query function in the query function needs to return a promise um, and the data uh, use query or view query will handle errors appropriately when errors are thrown from inside of your fetcher function and then keep previous data is true keeps the page from jarring so it doesn't have to necessarily execute the previous query um, when you scroll backwards and you end up with kind of a blank page while it's waiting to get that data. So it's taking that previous data and putting it in place, All right? And so without doing nothing else, that executes the first query. And then by updating the page ref, it automatically triggers the query to execute again. And that's literally all you have to do. So that's how I'm, nav I'm navigating to the next page by increasing that value. And I'm going backwards by uh, reducing that value. And this math max makes sure that it, the page does not go below zero. So that's how the paging is working. And we can you know, step over to this page here to kind of get an idea. So let's do a hard refresh. And so now I've executed my first query. I can look here in my dev tools and see I got my 20 users back in my data. And that's the data that's being rendered here. Um, I view queries keeping track of my page number for me. And then as I go to the next page, actually view query isn't the ref is, it's just getting passed in. Um, so now as I go to the next page, you can see the page, I'm on page two now, and people.2, that's the key for the second page that got passed in, and that's all the data here. And talking about the stale and in inactive, basically what it's saying is that people, page two, is what is visible. The data is stale, needs to be updated. It's saying people one is inactive, it's not, it's gone. Um, it's As you can see, it's not visible on the page, but if I go back, uh, yeah, if I go back, like get my click working, you can see it goes back, it fetches page one, makes it, st makes it stale, and then page two becomes inactive. So now let's go forward to page two again, and it, it changes. You can go to page three. We can keep navigating through pages, and the same behavior is happening. It's a, the query switching from active to when it's getting the data to stale, meaning the data um, needs to be refreshed. You can, through configuration, and you can read in the documentation, update the stale time and the cache time and other things so that you don't necessarily have to hit the database that often. 
Um, that's not covered in this video, but it's in the documentation. So that's how we're navigating the pages. And you can see each, each page query uh, for people is, has a separate array which is holding the data for it. Um, which is different than how the infinite scroll works. And let's go through the code on infinite scroll, and then we'll hop back over here to the tool to see how that works and what's happening in the tool. Now let's look at the code for the infinite example. Kind of same process as before. Uh, we're checking for loading at the top and adding the loading. So let's go here. You can see the initial loading that happens there on that page. And then we are utilizing once again values that we get from uh, values that we're getting from the use query on whether or not it's fetching and then also if there's a next page on whether or not um, we need to a disable the button um, during fetching kind of same process as before uh, we're checking for loading at the top and adding the loading so let's go here you can see the initial loading that happens there on that page and then we are utilizing once again values that we get from uh, values that we're getting from the use query on whether or not it's fetching and then also if there's a next page on whether or not um, we need to a disable the button um, during fetching if there is no next page we just completely remove the button from the screen if there is a next page We'll disable it if it's fetching. And then as you can see, we can update the text that appears on the button. So uh, right now it says load more, switching to loading, load more, no more data, refresh. Um, so that's what's happening with that button. All right, so let's get that loaded. And then down here, it's kind of, it's a little bit different here. So kind of let me, let me explain what's happening. So what happens is that you get an array of pages returned from the query. And so what we're looping doing here is we're looping through the array of pages in this first for loop. And then in the second for loop, we're looping through the data that we got from each specific page and rendering it in the UI. So that's what this is. All right. And then down here, we have our people fetcher. A um, little different here, you pass in a page param as an object. This is indicating what page number we're on. Uh, we're using it here in the query. This time we're only doing 10 results. Uh, we return our response. We have our fake delay. And then here's, the, here's uh, something we're doing a little bit different here. We're passing back the results as the page data, but we're also passing back the um, cursor so that the application knows where the cursor is in the data or i.e. what page number is really cursor and page number are kind of the same here and the way that I'm indicating I'm only taking three pages you would implement this differently if you knew the actual length of your uh, data um, is that you return undefined when you're at the end of your data um, otherwise I'm incrementing my page param to get me the next page so kind of moving my cursor to the next item so that's what's happening here and then this is this is a little bit different here. We're using to call use infinite query here, and it's returning our data, um, a function to fetch the, fetch the next page of data, a property to let you know if there's more data, if it's fetching, and if it's loading. All right, and then here you pass in a query key like before. You pass in your function, and then here's a new something new. It's called get next page. Um, I have this function implemented here. Get next page param. What I do is I look at, I get the last page of data that was loaded and then I look at the cursor and that cursor is the number of the next page that I need to get. And then you just have a function here to call next page, which once again is managed by uh, view query. You can see it's getting returned here by, um, by use infinite qu query hook. So let's, we already saw it working. Now let's take a look inside of using the view query tools to see what the magic is that's going on and talk about the way the data is put together that I mentioned. So if we go back to our infinite query page and we take a look, here's our, here's our uh, people infinite, our initial query, it's stale now. Um, we got the data and as you can see, the results come with uh, different things. We have 
our pages and we have our params. And so that's the first array of data. Now when I load more data, you can see I get my second page. So now I have two pages, two, eh, two pages. And if we look at my data, there's my page one, there's my page two. So you, page one, that's Laura at the top. And my page two data, because there's only 10 items, is down here, a John Le Monet, right there. And also, did, did you notice that the um, cursor is set to two, and then it's set to three here. So now, when I go and get my data one more time, it updated it. You can see now I have three pages of data. If I go down to my third one, my cursor set the undefined, and now that my cursor set the undefined, that means there's no more data. You notice the top button's gone away, and I have all 30 of my items in the array. So this is all to be kind of pretty awesome how it's all managed for you. You have access to the data. You can kind of see what's going on using the tool, and it wraps a lot of the complexity that you would have to try to manage this yourself um, inside of this awesome hook of use infinite query or in the other one, just how you could just do the use query and it could kind of manage it all for you there too. So um, once again, all the source code is posted on my GitHub repo. The uh, view tool, view query tool is something I definitely um, think you should check out whenever you're using a view query in your application so that you can kind of see what's going on behind the scenes. And um, that's about it. You know, thanks for stopping by. Please leave a comment below. Please make sure you subscribe to the channel. It's really important to me. Uh, I'm doing the hard work. Just uh, subscribing shows me that you appreciate it. Liking the video, even leaving a comment, even more. Thank you very much. Um, also, there's a link to my newsletter below. Check that out if you want to get updated to any blog content or view content that I create. Talk to you later. Bye.